Acts chapter number 27, uh, and it is good to see many visitors today, and many of you have family with you, and uh, some uh, old faces, and well, that may not sound right, but well, you are much older now than you, some who grew up here, and some who have spent some time here, but it's good to have uh, you in the service uh, to, <laughs> today, and uh, we look forward to what God has for us from His Word, and look forward to a blessed week. This morning, I preached a message that if you were not in the service, I would encourage you uh, to listen to it through one of the uh, different means that we have for you to listen to it, uh, not because I preached it, but because of the powerful truths uh, that were preached. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, get listen to that message. Those of you that were here, maybe one that you want to bookmark, uh, listen to again. I say that because uh, tonight I'm going to preach from a passage of Scripture that when I, when I face my fear, one of the scriptures that I go to to help me have the confidence to push forward in spite of fear. And so we're going to look at that uh, this evening. And I'm going to read one verse of scripture in Acts 27, <coughs> and then we'll refer to several verses uh, in this chapter. So I want you to keep your Bibles open. And uh, I, I won't preach very long uh, tonight. Uh, and the outline is going to be is a simple, simple outline. I promise you, you will not hear anything new tonight, uh, but we'll be reminded of some things that we can hold on to uh, in the days that we live in. Verse 25 of Acts chapter number 27. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let me. Read that again. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be <coughs> even as it was told me. With that phrase there, for I believe God. What a statement. Can you make that statement? You ought to. You're a child of God. Uh, you ought to be able to say, I believe God. There's a lot of different ways I could go with this message tonight, but I want to uh, not just <laughs> remind us of some things, uh, but I want to I preach from this text with this context tonight. Sometimes you just have to believe God. Sometimes you just have to believe Him. We as Christians sometimes like to uh, throw our shoulders back and say, well, I, I believe God over, oh, well, Wait just a little bit longer, and that'll be tested. And sometimes we face things in life where we just have to believe God. Tonight, I want to preach on that subject. Father, I pray that <coughs> you'll allow, this, allow the Word of God to speak to our hearts. May the Spirit of God uh, strengthen us this evening. I know I need your power. I know I need your strength. And Father, I <coughs> pray for your people tonight. We don't know what we have to face this week. But we do know that uh, we need you uh, as we go through our lives this week. Uh, Father, I pray that uh, our faith will be strengthened tonight uh, by being in church. Our faith will be strengthened by the word of God. And Father, I pray that you'll do what only you can do. May you challenge us. May you convict us. May you encourage us tonight. May you remind us uh, of your abilities. May you remind us of, of how important it is for us to depend on you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. You know, sometimes you just have to believe God. Let's just be honest tonight. All of us at times in our life, more often than we probably realize or like to admit, when we're faced with a situation, uh, we try and work out every little detail ourselves. And we, we often, to our detriment, don't always call on God first, but in some ways, say, well, I can figure this out, or I've got this handled. But sometimes, and many times, God allows things to come across our path or enter into our life where we just have to believe God. Sometimes we're faced with circumstances that deal with our job and our livelihood, and we just have to believe God. Many times with our health, our health changes, our our, our health uh, deteriorates, and uh, sometimes we face things with our health that we never thought we would face. Sometimes you've just got to believe God. 
You think of uh, different circumstances in your life and disappointments and heartaches and burdens. And sometimes we look back and forth and say, I don't know what to do. And uh, there's nothing that really changes our circumstances, friend. There's going to come times in your life where you just have to believe God. I know what the world says. I know what your doubts say. I know what fears say. But friend, be reminded about what God says. And that's not a bad place to be where we just have to just believe God, just have to trust God. And we find ourselves in times we look at our life, and life ends up different than we thought it would end up. This coming June, my wife and I will celebrate 25 years of just the best 25 years of her life. Uh, We will be celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this coming June. And what a joy it has been for her to be married to me. I mean, can I get a witness out there? She's homesick with a sick kid, so I can say whatever I want to say tonight. But everything that has taken place in our marriage is not what we had planned. Sometimes you just have to believe God. Uh, Friend, in your marriage, sometimes things end up differently than you ever thought planned. You didn't know that a spouse would walk out on you, but you've still got to just believe God. You didn't know that you would bury a spouse, but you've got to believe God. Sometimes in dealing with the children that we have, and sometimes things don't work out the way that we had planned. You know how it is when you hear the you get the confirmation of you're having that first child. And, oh, it's nice, those of us that have been down the road in this area, you can almost sense them and their pride in, my child will be the first child that does no wrong. My child will be the first child that will be, uh, will be speaking before everybody else. My child will be the, oh, you get that sense and you just say, oh, well, I, can, I wish I could wrap up a big dose of reality and hand it to them, but it'll come soon enough. But sometimes when dealing with your children, rearing your children, the dreams you have for your children, sometimes that doesn't work the way you had it planned, but you just have to trust God. Uh, I... I, when I, when, when I uh, was, we got married 25, over 20, almost 25 years ago, I didn't know that God was going to give me all girls. I've had to live this verse. Sometimes you just have to trust God. <laughs> there's no explanation. There's no reasoning behind why God does some of the things God does. It's really tough, I tell you, but I just got to trust him. No, but seriously, some of you tonight, you carry a, heavy burden because you did the best you could to rear your child. But while you're here in church, they're out not serving God, but dishonoring. That's, that's a lot to deal with. That's a burden to carry. And by the way, let me, as I say that, let me just interject to the teenagers sitting over here, the young adults, don't you do that to your mama. The Bible is still very clear. Still very clear. Don't do that to your mom and your dad. Don't do that to the people who've invested in you. Serve God with your life. But sometimes that happens. You say, Pastor, what do I do? You just have to trust God. You just have to be reminded that if you train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. You just have to trust God. Sometimes you have to remind yourself that you believe God. As I preached this morning on the difference of a fear and living in the spirit of fear. And how it's not a sin for us to be afraid because we're created naturally to be afraid. But we're not to live in the spirit of fear. How there's a difference. And not to preach that whole message, but there are times in my life when I face something and my mind goes back and I remind myself, I'll just say, I believe God. I believe God. Sometimes you've got to remind yourself. You know, sometimes you've got to remind God that you believe Him. I know a lot of times when I pray, my prayer is just simply, God, I just, want, I just want to remind you, I believe you. I just want to remind you, I know what that book says, I believe you. Sometimes you've got to remind the devil that you're not listening to him, that you believe God. Sometimes you've got to remind other people, well, I believe God. 
Well, you know what the latest survey said? No, I don't. I believe God. You know what the opinion is on social media? No, I don't. I believe God. Do you know what my fears are? No, I believe God. And friends, sometimes you just have to believe God. You say, Pastor, this is such a simple thought. Yes, but faith is everything in the Christian life. Trust and belief in God is everything in the Christian life. If the devil can shake your faith, he can push you away from God. He'll drive a wedge between you and your God. You just need to make up your mind, and we all need to be reminded, no matter what life brings us, I believe God. I believe he loves me. I believe he cares for me. I believe he watches over me. I believe every promise in this book is true. I believe Romans 8, 28. I believe Jeremiah 33, 3. I believe God. If it comes to my doubts in God's word, I've just decided I believe God. And sometimes, friend, you just have to believe God. Let me give you a quick, simple outline tonight. I promise I'm going to let you out before dark tonight. Let me say number one, his word can be trusted. His word can be trusted. If God says it, it's done. It's true. His word can be trusted. Christian, hear me tonight. You build your life on the word of God, you'll never be let down by God's word. Husband, wife, build your marriage on the word of God, you'll never be let down by God's word. Rear your children by the word of God, you'll never be disappointed in God's word. People disappoint Life's disappoints, but God's word can be trusted. <coughs> I have not lived as long as some have lived. I have not faced some of the things that some have faced. But in my 46 years, there's a lot of things that I have encountered in my life. And I can tell you, from the mountaintop to the valley, God's word has never let me down. God's word has never been false. And in the dark days of life, I have held on to the promises of God's word. And I can tell you tonight, standing here on a Sunday evening at the Emmanuel Baptist Church, that God's word can can be trusted. Trust the word of God. Verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. This story, if you know this story, Paul has been uh, <coughs> working to get to Rome so he could get the gospel to Rome. And what a journey his life had been, his ministry had been. And that's something for us to be reminded tonight when we feel like the Lord is doing something in, in our area of service of our ministry and confirming in our heart, it's not always a straight line. And Paul has his ups and downs and his wonderings, and now he's getting ready to go over to Italy. He's getting ready to go to Rome. And to summarize the story, there was a warning that he gave that they should not go. They went. There's a great storm. And earlier, a few verses earlier, we find that Paul gets confirmation that they're going to be okay. Let me read verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who, whose I am, in whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. The ship is lost in the storm, the waves are crashing. They're in the midst of this storm. <clears throat> God sent word to Paul. You're getting to Rome. You're going to be okay. And isn't it amazing we see in the life of Paul that he believed the word of God even when he felt the splash 
of the waves. He believed the word of God even when he was under a starless sky. And he said, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Apparently, nobody else there did. And he goes on to say that it shall be even as it was told me. You can call me naive. You can call me old-fashioned. But can I tell you, I still believe the word of God. I still believe that God's blessings come from obedience to this book. I still believe every truth, every promise. And I don't think I have to say it. But I believe this old King James Bible is the inspired, infallible, perfect words of God. And I still believe the old black book, you can trust God's word to trust God. You know what we all have in common as people and as Christians? We like to run our mouth. I, I, I'm sorry to step on toes tonight, but it's true. And we say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Oh, I trust God. You know that's easy to say? I trust God. It's easy as a young man to say, yeah, I'm going to preach, and there's nobody going to tell me what to preach and what not to preach until they tell you. You do this or don't do that or else. It's a lot easier to say than to live. It's easy as a child of God to say, I trust God, hashtag blessed. Just because you hashtag it on a social media post, and again, if you don't know what that is, you are blessed. But just because you hashtag it on a social media post doesn't mean it's real We like to say it, but then when God gives us, don't miss this, an opportunity to prove it, we look at God and say, what are you doing, God? All I've been trying to do is serve you, and now I'm in a storm. You're looking at it wrong. He's given you an opportunity to show him that you really do believe him. He's given you an opportunity to show him that you believe God. Storms provide opportunities to trust him. Paul had an opportunity to show these men what faith in God was like. Do you know everybody in here could probably give a testimony of another Christian who they saw their faith in their storm, in their difficulty, and said, God can be trusted. That's a faith like I'd like to have. Friend, this evening, if you find yourself in a situation that we would call a storm of life or we call a valley of life, realize you need to trust God because it's a way for you to honor God. It's a way for you to be blessed by God. Your family, those that live in your house, are going to be affected by whether or not you trust God. But there's somebody there's somebody you don't realize that's watching your life. There's somebody you don't realize that's watching you. And now they've heard you say through the years how God makes no mistake. They've heard you say through the years how, how God is always faithful. And now you're in a storm. And they're watching to see if you really believe God. The only way your belief in God can be tested and tried is for it to be in a storm. And those storms provide opportunities to trust him. Number three. See how fast I'm moving tonight? When you believe God, it helps you hold on in the storm. I, don't have, I won't take the time tonight, but if you read through this passage of Scripture, it's very interesting the picture the Scripture paints of the storm that they were in. But yet they were able to hold on when all they had was what this crazy preacher man 
said an angel appeared to him, sent from God, and said, we're going to be okay, boys. I believe God. That's all they had. But friend, if you read the story, at the end of the chapter, it says some floated ashore on broken pieces. I wonder how many were tossing, and I wonder how many when the waves were crashing and the hinder part of that ship breaks off. I wonder how many say, well, I just ought to give. But no, there was the words of a man that said, the, the words of the Lord came to me, and I believe God. Sometimes, friend, that's all you have to hold on to. But can I testify to you tonight? It's enough. It's enough. It's enough to hold on to. There are Christians that are, that will become casualties Simply because a storm came, life did not work out the way they thought it was going to work out, and they did not, not hold on. Boy, my heart has been blessed, and I'll not give too much specifics with several, there's been two or three situations this week, completely opposite of each other, and really random of coming across the path of individuals who just were devastated by life. Devastated by the actions of others. Had nothing, everything was taken from them. But to hear their testimony of how they held on to and they would give you, they'd say, one, this is the verse I held on to. And now, they're not in that situation anymore. Time has been removed and God has rebuilt their life and has given them something in many ways is even better than they had it before. And they look back to that, 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 that time where they didn't have anybody else they could hold on to, but their testimony was, it helped me hold on. They could say it like, they didn't say it like this, but it could be said like this. They decided to just believe God. They didn't know how they were going to make it. They didn't know how they were going to get through, but they just held on because God's word can be trusted, and they had nobody else to put their faith in. They had nobody else they could depend on, so they just decided they were going to believe God, and it helped them hold on. Christian, don't you give up. You hold on. Don't you give up. You hold to that truth and you hold to that promise. There's enough power in two or three words of this scripture for you to build a life on, for you to hang on to. And don't you give up. Don't you quit. God's word, believing in God, will help you hold on. And number four. I like these three, but I really like number four. When you believe God, it affects other people. It affects other people. I am convinced this world is looking for Christians whose words match their life. Let me say it like this. Whose life matches this book they say they believe. I'm convinced this world is looking for that. But when you believe God, it has an effect on other people. The Bible is so full of little nuggets of truth and, and little things that I know I get joy out of. And I want to point one out to you tonight that I, I enjoy. It's a blessing to me. You may not get as excited about it, but I want to talk about it. This idea of believing God affects others. Notice in verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good Cheer. Now, think of the circumstances that they're in. Their ship is sinking. They think they're all going to die. And here comes the preacher man. Be of good cheer. Kind of how some of you look at your pastor when you're in your valley and he comes to the pulpit and says, 
Folks, be happy. Be of good cheer. You ought to be excited to be a Christian. Well, pastor, I don't know how life is in your utopia, but out here in the real world, we got burdens. Out here in the real world, we got problems. Out here in the real world, we're just trying not to sink and die. Can you imagine the look on their faces? Wherefore, search. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. Well, that settles it. How is that going to keep us from sinking? How is that going to keep us from getting to shore? That it shall be even as it was told me. The circumstance was a great storm that they were in. But notice this in verse number 36. Then were they all of good cheer. Think of that. In verse 25, they were going to perish. Paul says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Between verse 25 and verse 36, the storm rages on. They find their way to this body of land. They take the meat, they, they eat of the food, and the Bible declares in verse number 36, then were they all of good cheer. See, Paul, believing God, his faith, his confidence, was instrumental in them being of good cheer. Because see, not everybody on that ship knew God like Paul knew God. Not everybody on that ship had the faith that Paul had. But Paul's faith gave them something to hang on to. Paul's faith affected them. Paul believing in God. Paul believing the word of God. Paul believing that he was going to Rome. Paul believing the angel of the Lord affected them. See, Christian, in some situations, you're the only God somebody is ever around. And if Paul had said, well, fellas, I guess it's all over. We're here for nothing. Something tells me that we wouldn't find them all in verse 36. Notice the difference. They're still on the ship. They're still shipwrecked. They're still sinking in verse number 25. We find Paul saying, be of good cheer. But they weren't of good cheer until they had dry ground under their feet. They didn't have the same faith as Paul had. But it was Paul's faith and Paul's belief in God that was instrumental in them being of good cheer. I wonder how many other people would make it. How many others would not perish in a storm if the Christian in their life would just say, Sirs, be of good cheer. What are you talking about? Can't you see What's going on here? Can't you see the ship is breaking up? Can't you see that the storm is going to overtake us? Can't you understand what we're dealing with? But I believe God. And what this world needs and what God needs is for Christians to hold on to his word, believe him enough so that give some time for him to get you, Christian, from the, the, the sinking ship to dry ground so all of those around you can witness and say, he believed God, and God came through. I want to know that God. Your belief in God affects somebody else. Mom and Dad, your belief in God affects your children that live in your house. See, what they see in your home preaches a, a louder sermon than what they hear here. If you don't believe God... Boy, that's affecting them. But can I tell you, 
Will it affect the mind and the heart of a child so they'll never forget? As when mom and dad don't know where the next rent check's coming, don't know where the next meal's coming, don't know how the answer to this problem's coming, but they believe that as long as they do the things God tells them to do, and they'll still put that tithe in the offering plate, and they'll still be faithful to, to the things of God, and they still hang on, hang on to the promises of God, and then, and then God comes through, and God comes through, and God comes through. They have seen the faith. They have not just heard about it. They have seen what happens when you believe God. That, friend, is what people around us need to see, is that we... Believe God. I want the children of the Emmanuel Baptist Church to know they have a pastor that believes God. I believe God when things are well. I believe God when things are difficult. The children in our homes need to have a mom and dad who make up their mind they're just going to believe God. It affects other people. Sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. I don't know how you read the scripture, but I find myself, try to place myself in the story. And I imagine, I would love to have seen the look on the faces. And one side of me thinks, they look at Paul like, somebody shut him up. But I don't know if that's what happened. I don't know if that was the mood. Circumstances were so desperate that when the man of God stepped forth and said, I've heard from God and I believe God, we're going to be okay. Circumstances were so desperate and so dire that it gave those there confidence and hope, a reason to keep going. Friend, we don't understand how we affect the people around us. What you, I don't know what you're facing tonight. But do you believe God? I know we live in 20, the year 2020. And I know things are different now. As I preached out too long ago, we have a lot of woke, independent Baptists who are going a different way. But I believe God. I know what the surveys say, but I believe God. I know what the critic says, but I believe God. I know what the, the prodigal says, but I believe God. I know what the lost man says, but I believe God. Friend, sometimes you've just got to believe God. I like to have all the answers ahead of time. When I was in school, my teachers frowned on that. Called it cheating or something like that. I don't know. We'll say, well, duh, Pastor. It's not much of a test if you have the answers ahead of time and know how to, where to fill them all in. Well, duh, Christian. It's not much of a test if you have the answers ahead of time and you know how everything's supposed to go. Uh, we, we just have to believe God. Simple message, simple truth, hard to live. Do you believe God tonight? It's easier to say than live. But I can promise you this, God will give you an opportunity to prove it. Now, I want you to remember something when you do. I, I, I hope you don't think less of me for saying what I'm about to say. But there's been times in my life when I, I probably would have quit. But I considered how it would affect the people around me. I, I, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to face this. I don't want to move forward with this. But I knew I had other people depending on me. People who called me dad. Who called me husband. Who called me Pastor. Well, you're the pastor. You, you, you can't quit. Okay. This Bible is good for every man. You ever think about how it affects the pastor when somebody quits? <laughs> you know, nobody ever considers that. Well, pastor, if you quit, 
You'll devastate us. Well, I'm not going to quit. Will you ever consider what it does to the heart of a pastor when a Christian quits? Or how about your soul winning partner? Or how about the person you've sat next to in church for more than a decade? You ever consider how it affects them? On the flip side of that, consider how it affects them when you just hang on to the truths of God's word and say, I'm just going to believe God. I'm just, well, explain it to me. I can't, I can't, I can't. And by the way, too many Christians are wanting an explanation from God, from the pastor, from mom and dad. You just have to believe him. And I don't have to know all the answers because I know he has all the answers. You know, that's, that's easy to say. But how are you going to live it? Let's believe God. Father, I pray tonight. Thank you.